I've decided to make some instructional videos um, on some home fix-it projects or uh, problems or solutions to problems or situations um, in the attempt to, uh, to educate uh, two new homeowners, <laughs> my son and my daughter. And uh, this was a good opportunity, this particular uh, situation, um, to uh, put on video and to post so that they can help uh, both either my son or my daughter, uh, uh, you know, in this uh, fix-it problem. Basically what we have in this situation is we have a ceiling fan in a bedroom um, that is uh, originally when the house was wired um, ceiling fans weren't a big thing, it's a 30 year old house um, so it was just a light and the light switch and the light just goes on and off as you throw the switch so uh, in a ceiling fan in a light situation um, when you want to control the fan and the light separately, um, you need to kind of rewire it so that uh, it can do so. Um, as you follow the manufacturer's instructions to most ceiling fans, if you're in this situation, as I did when I originally installed this fan, as you put the uh, hot wire for the motor and the light, um, you just put them together. And that way, when you do throw the switch, it just turns the light and the fan off. As you see, the fan will stop spinning and the light goes off. It turns the fan off and the light off all at one time. So what we want to do here is I want to add another switch so that one controls the light and uh, uh, one controls the uh, fan. And basically what you'll need for this project is you're going to need some 14-gauge wire. Um, you're going to need a new cover plate. You're going to need, I went ahead and bought two single pull switches. Um, I have one already in the light, but I didn't want to risk it being different. So this way when they're both installed, they look the same. And then you're going to need one of these boxes uh, because this box um, uh, does two, it has two switches for it. And uh, this, this, what, this box uh, actually has little uh, tabs on it. And uh, so we won't have to mount it to a stud or anything. It'll just, uh, it'll sandwich itself on the drywall. Okay, uh, what do I mean when I say a single pull switch? Well, a single pull switch is nothing more than uh, a switch that uh, the hot wire comes in on, on the bottom. You throw the switch and the electricity travels through the switch and goes up to the light or to the fan. So it's just hot wire in, hot wire out. It's just single pull. Single, single, single circuit is going through there. That's all it's doing. On, off, on, off. Um, for lights and fans and uh, even some receptacles, 14-gauge uh, wire is plenty. 14-gauge um, uh, is the is actually the roundness of this wire that's in here, and uh, this is two wire with a with a copper ground. So you have a black and you have a white and you have the copper ground. And uh, basically, this is this is perfect for light switches. Um, it's easy and flexible. It's pretty thin. Uh, you'll see later on in the video, we have to run it through the wall and uh, um, uh, from the attic and get it to the uh, light box. So this is perfect, perfect uh, wire for this, for this, uh, for this project. Um, when you go to wire something like this, it's good just to kind of look around. If you look down here, there is a, uh, there's a receptacle. If I had to guess, or if I was the guy that was wiring this house, I would probably draw my power from here. I mean, I think if you tore this wall apart, in all likelihood, you would see uh, a white and a black wire running from this receptacle, which is hot, and it would run up through here and it would come, come to the switch. Um, inside this switch box, the black wire will be connected to the, the bottom, half, bottom part of the single pull switch, and then the black wire will be connected to the top half of the single pull switch. It'll go up through, through the wall, out, and all the way across, and into that box that's up there that's controlling the light in the uh, in this case the light and the motor. Um, the white wire is just going to bypass the switch. It'll probably travel through this box, but it pro there's no it doesn't connect to the switch at all. It just goes through the box up into the light. So if you opened up the which we'll do, we'll open up the box up there, you'll see a black and a white wire. If you open up this box, all you're going to see is a black wire connected to the thing and maybe you'll see a white wire passing through. And had you tore all this up, you would probably see that their black and the white wire came from this receptacle down here. Okay, so here you can see I've taken the cover plate off. Um, just as I suspected, you have a white wire. Um, if you can see that, the white wire is just cut and then wire wired, uh, wire nutted together and uh, continues on. The black wire is hot coming in and uh, hot going out. So when you throw the switch, the switch is it's still hot on the bottom, but it's no longer hot on top. So you throw it and the hot goes all the way through. 
So that's how that works. And then basically what we want to do is we want to take this box, this single holding uh, for a receptacle or a single box, we want to make it a double. Now if the stud's on this side, um, in all likelihood this box has a nail through the top of it. It's either nailing to a stud on this side or it's nailing to a stud on this side. So um, what we want to do is we want to remove this, remove this box. However, the, the double box is either going to go in this direction, we're going to make it bigger, or it's going to go in this direction to make it bigger, depending on which side uh, this is nailed to a stud. It's either on this side or it's either on this side. That feels pretty solid, so I would say the stud is on this side, just guessing. Um, but uh, we'll see when we uh, get into it. Remember, we don't want to make this hole any bigger than our double box, um, because we don't want to fix any drywall. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we just want to make this as big as we needed to make it to put the new box in and run the new wire. Okay, uh, one way to make sure that the power is off, um, a way to test it without having a tester, is to simply go to your panel box. Uh, mine just happens to be labeled, and I can turn off the breaker that goes to that bedroom. Um, but what I've done is I've just left the light and not the light and the fan on, um, so it's hot, it's on, and I'm just going to throw the breaker for that uh, for that bedroom, and then I'm just going to go to the bedroom, and if the light and the fan are off, then uh, I don't have to worry. The one thing that you do have to uh, concern yourself with, we haven't taken the the uh, fan down yet and we haven't looked at the wires in there. If there's multiple wires in there then it's quite possible that something else is hot. Um, I've actually uh, taken that apart before um, so I know that there's just a black and a white wire in there because I wired the fan. But uh, in your application if you were uh, if you wanted to make sure or, or if you got into the, the light switch itself and there was multiple wires in there just because the one is switch is turned off or the light goes off doesn't necessarily mean that all the wires in either the light box or the light the light switch box that all of them are off so just be careful and here you can see the light and the fan are off uh, so the breaker did turn did in fact turn off there's the switch it's a little darker in here as you can tell and uh, you know there's nothing these are not hot no longer I can touch them um, there's no power but again be careful if there's more wires in this switch or when you take that assembly apart and there's more wires up there it doesn't necessarily mean you've turned off all the power in those two boxes. Um, I just happened to uh, bend up in that box before. I know there's just a black and a white wire, so I, I'm, I'm assured that there, anything that I'm playing with right now uh, doesn't have any power to it and I won't get shocked. Okay, basically what I've done here now is I've taken the switch uh, off and I've cleaned the edges around with a razor knife um, to free up the box. So you can see how the box is wiggling. Um, and that's what we want. And ba uh, what we want to do is we want to we want to test our theory. We we originally thought that the stud was on this side because it just sounded like it, and then it was hollower on this side. So you can stick your screwdriver in there, and you can see I'm not hitting I'm not hitting a stud. And if I stick it in on the other side, I'm definitely hitting something. So the box the box is nailed to this stud. So what we got to do is we got to free up this box without damaging any of this any of this drywall and since we know we're going in this direction we can to help us get the box out we can go ahead and cut this the size of the two box and give us a little bit more room to play with and wiggle that around because we need to free that up okay here you can see I went ahead and cut the double size of the box I just used the box itself as a measuring device I don't want to go any bigger than the the width of the box um, and I went ahead and uh, un it, the, the nails that were going to the stud in there, I don't know if you can see that, it's really hard to see. And you can see the original wire that comes from that receptacle kind of loops around and goes down. So that's my hot one all the time. Uh, this is going up to the light. And I just want to pull this assembly apart. I just want to, and I want to leave it open, uh, leave, leave the hole open, and then we're going to go up in the attic and we're going to run a new wire down to this hole and grab it, run it through our new box, and we're going to run the new wire over to the over to the fan. All right, here you can see I went ahead and took the uh, fan down. Um, needs to be dusted, but uh, yeah. Anyways, I took the fan down, and uh, this is the box, and here it is. This is the white wire, and here's the black wire, um, and then there's a ground. This is the fan mounting bracket to. Uh, here you can see that's the uh, uh, the box that's up in the attic or in, mounted in the ceiling. We're going to see shortly. Um, and there's the two wires. These two wires, if you if you did a continuity test, uh, basically uh, hooked up a flashlight uh, battery 
and it, the, the, you know, the positive had to travel through here and the negative had to travel through here. And then you wire, you actually twisted these together, these two together and finished off the contact. You would find that these two wires are those two wires. And all it is, is we'll see soon in the attic, it probably just runs right on top of the ceiling joists. There's a hole in the top plate of the 2x4 construction, there's probably a hole in there, and it drop as this wire drops down through, we probably this wire drops right down through, we probably won't even have to drill a hole, we'll probably be able to just drop the wire in between the two studs. There's one here and there's one 16 inches away. There's a channel, we'll be able to drop uh, a wire right down there and lead it over to this box, and that's all we're trying to do. So uh, here we are in the attic, and uh, my bedroom's way down there. So what we got to do is we got to find, it is insulated by the way, um, so we just got to find the wire, um, and I'm kind of using that uh, exhaust fan that's in my hallway. I know uh, to the left of that is the door leading to my bedroom, and I know that the wire somewhere in that uh, insulation and in that location is the wire leading down to the switch and a wire leading over to the center of the bedroom um, and we just gotta I brought my uh, 14 gauge wire with me and some wire clippers and we just need to run a wire alright I've located the top plate of the 2x4 of the wall that's uh, in my bedroom those two wires you see going down those holes um, that's actually one of the wires uh, for the light. The other one actually, uh, it probably just passes through that wall that we're not seeing it in the box, but I'm, I'm, I'm 100% certain that's uh, based on the location of this hallway fan and where I am in the attic. Uh, I'm a pretty much 100% certain uh, that that hole leads down to that outlet box because one of the wires, if you follow it all the way over, does lead, oops, sorry about that, does lead over to the uh, ceiling fan receptacle uh, box or the uh, ceiling fan uh, ceiling mounting box. Um, so I'm just going to run a wire from there, follow it all the way over, and I'm going to run it down that hole. Um, if we wanted to test it, we could set the light on top and we could go downstairs. And if we looked in the bedroom, we would see a light illuminating in the channel of the two 2x4s. Two um, and this, uh, I don't think this is necessary, but if you wanted to test it and you weren't sure where you were, and you wanted to climb all the way, you know, out of your attic and all the way downstairs and go look, that way you could tell the light would, would illuminate the uh, channel that you're in. But I'm pretty much certain that's, uh, that's where it leads. And there you can see I just ran the wire uh, down the existing hole. If, if there was multiple wires through there and it was tight, you would have to bring up a drill and actually drill a new hole. Uh, what I generally do uh, in doing so, I, I keep away from it good distance. Because I don't want to hit the wire, any of the existing wires that are going down. You assume they go straight down, but if they take a bend or turn, you don't want to hit them. But uh, that's, that's, that's all you got to do. And here's the white wire that represents our new wire. Um, uh, now let's go downstairs. Well, crawling through the attic isn't one of my favorite things to do, but uh, let's see how well we did. Uh, there's the hole, and it looks like, yes, there's the wire there. So we were, there's the wire we sent down, and I always send down plenty. That's more than enough wire. And then if you look, that one, of course, I was easily stuck right through the hole, so I knew I had that right. So now what we've done is uh, basically we've got... Uh, We've got the boxes cut to the hole. We can we can put the box assembly together, um, and then we'll just go through some wiring instructions. And we have a new uh, black and white wire going up to our light. So now we'll be able to have a switch that controls the uh, light and a switch that controls the fan. All right, I went ahead and uh, ran the wires uh, to the box. Um, what I did is I did the two. This is the original uh, light and fan wire that went up to the uh, fan. Uh, this is our new one that we ran, and this is the uh, the one that comes from that receptacle or the original hot wire. Um, I can't, I brought that one in from the bottom just so I could remember that that's the hot one, and these are the two going to the fan. And then this is just a matter of pushing this into the wall, and then once you do, it f pushes itself flush, and then these tabs when you screw those holes, these there's one on the bottom. The tabs it kind of sandwiches the whole thing and squeezes it to the wall and. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and wire the switch. And then just uh, screw in this screw here. You can see how it snugs itself right up against the wall. You don't want to go too tight, but that, that pretty much does it. And that box is nice and secure. 
All right, I went ahead and wired the switches. Um, basically what I've done is this is our original hot, went to the bottom of the switch, and then this is the original wire that went to the light and the fan, which is at the top of the switch, and if you remember when we threw that switch, that was completed that circle and made it hot. So then I've also, I take a short little piece of wire and I've connected it to the bottom of this switch, which is hot all the time, and moved it over to the bottom of this switch. So now this, the bottom of this switch and the bottom of this switch are both hot from the same power source, which is that black wire, which came from the receptacle down below. And then I've just put our, this is our new wire, I put that at the top of our second switch, and then that's going up to the uh, ceiling fan. The white wires are all just connected together. They've, they're essentially just bypassing the box. Um, the white common ground is going through this box all the way from the receptacle, or if you followed that all the way back, to the uh, power box, and then uh, or the panel box in the laundry room, and then that white wire goes up to the uh, up to the light, and then all we have, all we're left to do here is uh, reassemble the light, and uh, I'll probably clean it and dust it before I do, and uh, uh, put the whole uh, whole kit and caboodle back together, and uh, we'll have a light switch that controls the fan and a light switch that controls the light. All right, well I've installed the fan and. Uh, I put the uh, cover plate on and I went and turned the power on, so let's see how we did. I did the first switch, the light, uh, makes sense as you walk into the room you throw the light, and the other one, the fan, and uh, that's it. Um, so we got the fan and the light, and they're on their separate switches. Uh, this happens to be a remote control uh, speed variation fan, so um, I got a remote control for the speed, but that's it. Now hopefully that was pretty helpful for you, and uh, uh, anytime you're running wires or cable boxes or phone lines, uh, same kind of rules apply. You just got to get in there and take out the old box or if you're going to add a box and uh, buy those blue boxes. Uh, total cost, uh, about six and a half bucks. Um, I had the 14 gauge wire already, but even so, even if you had to buy that, it would be probably under $10 to do what, uh, what I just did here this afternoon. The hardest part was